The iPad kind of gets looked down upon when it comes to content creation. And really it's because iPadOS just doesn't have all the pro apps content creators are looking for. And while yes, it would be great to have apps like Final Cut on the iPad, you can still do some amazing things on the iPad. In fact, this whole video you're watching right now, every single part of this video was filmed and edited with an iPad Air. And I'm gonna show you how I did it. Hey guys, welcome to Retether Tech. My name is Jonathan. And yeah, like I mentioned, I'm using just my iPad Air to create this whole video. And I'm not even using the latest iPad Air with the M1 chip. I'm using the fourth generation iPad Air, which has Apple's A14 Bionic chip, which is still a very good chipset. Like I mentioned, I'm not gonna show you the iPad that I'm using. I'm just gonna tell you because I'm using that iPad to film everything in this video. So I'm using the rear 12 megapixel camera to record this video that you're seeing right now. And any screenshots or screen recordings that you see on this video, they're all gonna be made with the iPad Air. Everything is coming from the iPad Air and I'm also editing everything on the iPad Air. Now, of course, I needed a few accessories to make this video possible. So let's talk about the accessories I used to make this video. First of all, tripod. There are a few tablet tripods available on Amazon and they aren't too expensive. I'll link a few of them in the description below. But what I did for this video was a lot simpler. I just used the case that I have on my iPad. The case I have is able to hold up the iPad Air and then I placed it on a stand that I have for my laptop. This stand is really useful because you can adjust the height and also the angle and get that perfect angle for your videos. You of course want to make sure that the angle isn't too high or too low. So you want to keep it at eye level and this stand, this is just a regular laptop stand is able to do that. But what I did for this video is I just used that laptop stand. I was able to tilt it a little bit and get that perfect angle for this video. Now the iPad cameras aren't the best. They're not as good as what you'll find on the iPhone. But as you can see from this video, the iPad Air has pretty decent cameras. This is the rear camera, like I mentioned, the 12 megapixel rear camera. You're gonna find that same rear camera with the all new fifth generation iPad Air. And even the regular ninth gen iPad shouldn't be too bad, especially for YouTube. It should have a good enough camera to get the job done. Now it's important to have some good lighting and I'll leave a link to some budget studio lights that you may be able to use to film videos like this one. You don't have to spend a fortune on lights, but it is important to have some good lighting so that you can get the best video possible. You could even use the light from a window if you decided to film next to a window and use that natural light to get some nice looking video as well. Now let's talk about the microphone because of course audio is really important and you definitely need a microphone if you plan on shooting with your iPad. Your iPad's gonna be further away so you wanna have your microphone a lot closer to you. I'm using the Blue Yeti. Now I wouldn't consider the Blue Yeti a budget microphone but it's a really good microphone for the money. The Blue Yeti is a condenser microphone and it has four pickup patterns. And as you can see, it sounds pretty good. It's a little over a hundred dollars. You can maybe find it on sale for cheaper. And what I did since the Blue Yeti connects directly to USB type A, I have a USB type C to USB type A adapter. I connected that to my iPad Air, connected the Blue Yeti and it was plug and play. I didn't have to change any settings or really do anything on the iPad. It recognized the Blue Yeti right away and I'm recording this video just by plugging it in. Now, if you don't wanna to spend too much money on a condenser microphone, another option that you can go with is a lavalier microphone. And there's a lot of good budget lavalier microphones, but one that I really like is from Power Dewise. You can find it on Amazon right now for about 40 bucks. And it does a really good job. You will have to find an adapter to connect that lavalier microphone to your iPad though. So if you have an iPad Air or iPad mini or an iPad Pro, you're gonna need a USB type C to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack adapter. Now, if you have just a regular iPad or an older iPad, you will need a 3.5 millimeter to lightning adapter. And that's gonna give you the ability to connect that lavalier microphone into the iPad and get the best audio possible. Really, you want the microphone as close to you as possible because with the iPad, since the video kind of crops in a little bit, you wanna be able to push that iPad as far back as possible. And that means the iPad's microphone is gonna be further away and it's not gonna really be able to capture the best audio that you're gonna want for your videos. So once you've filmed your video, it's now time to edit. And there's a few accessories that I like to use when I'm editing on my iPad that just make it a lot easier. The iPad Air has a 10.9 inch screen 
which is actually a good display size if you're gonna video edit. I never felt that the screen was too small to edit with. And that really goes with any of the iPads. Even the iPad mini, I feel like even that display is good enough to edit. It's a little bit more cramped, but it'll still get the job done. Now, if you do want a larger display, you can buy a USB Type-C to HDMI adapter so you can connect the iPad to a monitor. It's just gonna mirror whatever's on your iPad to that monitor, which gives you just a larger display to work with. For the iPads that have a lightning connector, you can buy Apple's lightning to digital AV adapter. I'll leave a link to all these adapters in the description below. There's a lot of options to play around with. The most important thing to do is just to find what suits you best. If you prefer to have a larger display to work with, you might consider going with one of these adapters, especially because they're not too expensive unless you go with Apple's lightning digital AV adapter. That is a little pricey. Uh, but there are some other options on Amazon as well. But like I mentioned, I didn't think that these adapters were necessary in my use case. It's definitely easier to edit on a larger display, but I feel like the iPad's display should be more than enough to get the job done. Now I do recommend using a keyboard and a mouse when you're editing on the iPad. It's definitely easier to edit with an old fashioned keyboard and mouse. I use the Logitech K380 Bluetooth keyboard, which costs only about $30. And there's also the Logitech Pebble M350, which costs about $25. There's nothing really special about this keyboard and mouse from Logitech, but they're Bluetooth, they connect to the iPad, and they work. And it just makes editing videos, doing things on your iPad, a lot easier. Now the editing software I used on my iPad is LumaFusion, and it's probably the best video editing software you can find on the iPad, hands down in my opinion. Now it's not free, it does cost $29.99, but it's a one-time fee, and honestly, I feel like it's worth every penny. This whole video was edited using LumaFusion. All the screenshots, this video that you're seeing now, it was all thrown onto LumaFusion and I created this video that you're seeing right now. And really what I like about LumaFusion is that it adds so many helpful features that you just don't find on other apps like iMovie. Now it will require you to learn some of the basics, but the developer of LumaFusion has plenty of videos to help you get those basics down. With LumaFusion, there's tons of effects to choose from. You have some great color correction tools and so much more. If there's anything I recommend the most in this video, it has to be LumaFusion. They're not sponsoring this video or anything. They're not paying me to say that, but it's honestly, like I mentioned before, the best video editing software you can find on the iPad, in my opinion, at least until Apple decides to make Final Cut available on iPadOS. Now, once the video is complete, you can go ahead and export and upload to YouTube, and that's it. A whole video filmed and edited with only an iPad and some other accessories as well. But for the most part, the iPad did it all. Really, this just shows us that the iPad is a pretty amazing content creation tool. You don't need to buy an expensive camera or an expensive laptop. Really, the iPad that you probably already have or that is much less expensive can handle all of that just fine. But what do you guys think? How do you think this video came out? Is the iPad Air really a great content creation tool like I mentioned? Let me know with a comment down below. I also made a similar video to this one where I filmed and edited everything on that video with just my iPhone 13. If you wanna see that video, I'll make sure to link it in the description below and I'll also put the link right here. It should be right here, hopefully. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos just like this one on tech news, reviews, and opinions, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our new videos and I'll see you on the next one.